what is good? We're back, baby. We got round three. Ah, uh, nobody cares about the third no, round. Oops. Definitely going to be the least watched after <laughs> after maybe one, two, and then maybe you might tune in for three. Nobody's watching four. Recap, forget it. <sighs> no, the recap. I think I think we'll get there. And then the twenty three first. What would you trade? But you should come come closer. <laughs> Too close. <laughs> um. You, no, there's there's still some really good fun information in here. You should oh, definitely ton. be that checking third this round out. Be so excited about it. We had fun all the way through. There's there's good nuggets all throughout this thing. Like we've said it a million times, this is a lot of fun to record. Um, so we're hoping you guys are enjoying this series as well. Subscribe, like, comment, five star reviews, all that jazz, all really helps us out. Shirts at Revelry Brewing Co. Uh, what else you got? Uh, be kind. Rewind. Be kind. Remember VHS tapes? Oh yeah. <laughs> They're about as popular as the third round of a rookie draft video. Well, maybe less. Check it out. <laughs> All right. Still leading us off in the rounds, Mr. Ryan McDowell. Strong leadoff hitter. Who you who you uh, who you going with here? Some some fun options left. Yeah, a lot a lot of good options, and we talk about the uh, the poor class. I talked about it back in with with my one hundred and one pick, and really everybody's been talking about um, just how weak this class is and get out of your, uh, your 2022 picks. But that, that late second, uh, earlier to mid third round range, there's a lot of players Still in fun. that range. I like, uh, I was definitely tempted to take, uh, my, my hometown boy here, Wandell Robinson. I uh, was, was certainly considering him. Didn't want to be too much of a Homer though. So I went, I went a different way. I went with a different Robinson and I took Brian Robinson, taking Brian Robinson here, All right. uh, Washington commanders running back. And uh, I, I feel like this is the, the one player that I'm leaving almost every rookie draft with uh, in the same range. Uh, he's actually, I believe I have him ranked at 12th overall in a single quarterback format. Um, so pretty high on him yeah. compared to the consensus. You know, I think Washington is telling us everything we need to know about uh, how they feel about their backfield. Uh, and, and, and they're certainly going to give Brian Robinson a, uh, a role from day one, in my opinion, at least. Uh, I really love what he did in his final season at Alabama. Took him a while to get there. You know, he, yeah. he hung around for, uh, for several years and, uh, and and played a role, but it, it took until this final season before he was really the every down back. Uh, what I really was encouraged by, though, in, in that uh, this past season in Alabama was his pass catching role. Big it was not man. something, yeah. yeah, not something that he had showed off necessarily in previous years or had the opportunity to do, but uh, ended up catching quite a few passes for the Crimson Tide this past season and. And that's, like I said, that's encouraging for his, his role moving forward. Yeah. Um, seems like Ro Brian Robinson or really Wandell are kind of there for the taking if you want at the beginning of that third round in, in a lot of drafts. So um, I would, I think I'm leaning Wandell a little bit, but I know mm -hmm. uh, Zach Reed is also a friend of ours. He's a pretty big Brian Robinson uh, guy. So uh, trust his instincts. And, and we, we both did really like the pass catching uh, ability of, of that Robinson showed this year um, moves pretty well for a big guy yeah. and had, was pretty fluid. And, you know, like you said, I've been a big Gibson guy, so it's really hard for me to, you know, take down my bias wall there. Cause I do think Gibson could do so much, but you know, and, and I, I agree with you to the extent, you know, it does seem like the, the commanders are telling us what they want to do, but I think it's wrong what they're trying to do. <laughs> I do, uh, too. I do, too. You know, why do you bring back McKissick if you're going to sign Brian Robinson? Because Gibson could take on that McK McKissick role and, and then maybe mm -hmm. dial back some of the, the carries. Maybe he doesn't need 20 carries a game because you did see him wear down towards the end of the season. And get and, and he, he wasn't really right from the get-go. I think he had some shin bone spur or something before the pre, you know, in the preseason, before the season even started, and then they just – trucked them out there anyways even though they're bad and they could have just preserved them a little bit but like <laughs> yeah i don't have any faith in the commanders and what they're trying to do i feel like ververa is about as a sitting duck as you can get and uh i just i don't know i really like gibson so it does give me some reservation with brian robinson but i'm not gonna lie we've been doing mocks and stuff and brian robinson has given me reservation with gibson when i'm on the clock debating whether to take Gibson I am a little bit like ah oh, well they what are they gonna do are they gonna mess it up you know or what are they thinking um but 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 to the Brian Robinson pick you know he is just a really good 
all around solid player. And like you said, I, I didn't necessarily know that he was that good of a pass catcher. Watching John Mechie tape, you see Brian Robinson just mm-hmm. running option routes and yep. getting in and out of cuts and making handsy catches. And then looking at the stat line, it's just like five yards, five yards, five yards, six yards, six yards. Nothing sexy, but just getting the job done, getting what's blocked, being a little bit uh, having a little juice you saw that at the combine ran a good 40 so you know I, like i think i would have gone with wandell too it seems more fun of a of a stab but can't really be that mad at brian robinson the pick there yeah and you you know washington didn't just bring back uh jd mckissick they they basically stole him away right. from buffalo what right i mean he, yeah, right. he had agreed to a deal with the bills uh and, and before he could sign on the dotted line they they uh, you know, however his, they did convince his, him to come back. And, his ex made him a better offer, you know, basically, basically. Yeah. So like, but I have all your CDs over here. You don't want to leave all your CDs. Come back to Washington, everything. honey. Um, so, I mean, I think that was super noteworthy. You know, I, I've talked a, a lot about how, um, you know, how many visits the, that Washington had running back uh, or how many running backs? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. How many running backs they brought in on those, those top 30 pre-draft visits, most in the league. Uh, they, so they were t- looking, telling like us you what said, they want to do. They were looking right. at, they, tell, were, they were shopping around yeah. they were sh- and bringing in gentlemen callers and suitors. Yeah. And, and I've, re- I've been a real big Gibson fan as well. In fact, I remember on, uh, on locked on dynasty last year, uh, Matt Williams and I had a show where we, projected who would be the 101 in in, in dynasty drafts this offseason and i i said it would be antonio gibson so i obviously was way <laughs> off on that one but yeah. at that point i saw him uh seeing kind of an every down role uh gaining that pass catching role which he didn't have in his rookie season and it it was anything but uh you right. know you mentioned the injuries and I never really saw the targets i'm with you i i, I don't get it uh I mean, what are they just, doing? He, he was a wide receiver in college. You think he <laughs> right. could be? He had more catches than catcher. carries in college. Yeah. Like one. So it doesn't make sense to me. But at the same time, I, I'm trying to get better as a dynasty manager of letting go of you know those previous takes yeah. of those um, you know just just kind of letting go. You're not the uh, one in charge giving him carries. You know. So what can yeah, you do? They and and they mess it up all the time, but you got to go with what they're telling you. You know, I get it. Yeah. All right. So Brian Robinson at three one. Uh, we'll be back with the uh, last pick for for Ryan McDowell. All right. We're at three two in the draft. Moving into the third round. Getting into you know not as much fun talent going around, but still a couple of guys here. So uh, Troy King at T King mode on uh, on the Twitter. Who are you? Uh, who are you taking here at three two? I was struggling between two guys, mm-hmm. so I'll, I'll tell you who I went with and who I was debating. Okay. So I went with Wondell Robinson, and Wondell Robinson is a couple things. So one, it it was a very surprise pick that the Giants took him in the second round. I feel like the draft capital and just the selection of you know wide receiver, and I have no idea if it was because of all the Kadarius Tony trade rumors or whatever the case may be, or, but Wanda Robinson, he's dynamic and he's versatile and that he could, and hopefully they find a way to use him and use him often in the giants offense. Now the giants haven't given us much reason to be confident in their ability to run an offense, (laughs) you know, for the past few years. So that kind of scared me a little bit, but again, he's an explosive, athletic, dynamic player So for me in the third round, I'm chasing upside. So to me, I'm looking for those kind of players who can be used, you know, all over the field kind of, you know, right way. So that's one of the reasons I went Rondell. And the guy I was looking at as well is who went right after him is Jalen Tolbert. Mm -hmm. Jalen Tolbert, he went to the Dallas Cowboys and he's also a very solid prospect. And he landed in a very good opportunity. He could make a name for himself, but... I feel like he has more of an uphill battle. Like I know with Gallup, Gallup's going to probably miss the beginning of the year. So he has ability to maybe carve out a role for himself. Obviously, CeeDee Lamb is still the wide receiver one. Mm -hmm. And 
for for the Giants, though, we don't know what it's going to look like, right? It's more ambiguous. So I'm like, right. Wondell might have a way to kind of establish himself in that offense if things go right. I feel like with Jalen Tolbert, he's going to be fighting with C.D. Lamb and Schultz yeah. and – you know, I don't know how that's going to look for in terms of target wise. If, if he's that dude, maybe he's going to find a role. But these are some of the reasons why I went run Wandell. Yeah, I mean, both of the guys in front of Wandell or alongside of Wandell and Galladay and Tony, neither one have been super healthy throughout their career. Uh, and, and then, you know, Kadarius is. I've said it a million times. Like I think he's could be really great, but what what's he got between the ears? Can is that going to yeah know, fuck his on the field? status up um and exactly. then you do have day ball and and we don't really know what it's going to look like but we feel like we're we feel reasonably co- more confident than maybe we have in the giants in <laughs> exactly. the past and, and can wandell be a cole beasley plus for them like beasley eight that was an old cole beasley coming into that role but beasley eight for uh, you know a few years under the tutelage of of day ball and obviously he doesn't have josh allen but um uh, you know, so I, I think once I get into the third round, if Wandell's there, that's the guy that I'm going to typically target as well. So really like that pick. All right, John Bauer into that third round. Things are getting, you know, I don't know how you play your thirds and fourths here. So <laughs> what are you thinking at three, three, some, some decent talent left, uh, decent shots, at least I think for, 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 for me anyway. So what do you, what are you thinking here? You guys be sure to go follow him on Twitter at the Bauer club. Hit that follow button. Hit that follow button. Just going to plug you one uh, more time, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. So I'm going Jalen Tolbert at 303. This is it wasn't my typical draft. I'm going wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. And looking at the board and the running backs, uh, Tyler Algier, see, he has that fifth-round draft capital, which is concerning for me. But a player like him, you might get that immediate value spike. Hey, mm-hmm. He, he's getting touches week one. Boom. Now I can ship him off. Uh, Damian Pierce, he had already gone. Isaiah Spiller already went. But Jalen Tolbert, again, checks a lot of his boxes, third round draft capital. I'm not, I have no issues with third round draft capital receivers in Dallas. I have Michael Gallup right there behind me. Mm-hmm. So uh, is he going to be 100% to start the season? I don't know. But Tolbert in a high powered offense, I like the profile. A little bit older. But yeah. I still think he can do some things that offense where they're going to be looking for playmakers because, you know, it's, it's a team that's going to have to put up points. Yeah. And and I think Gallup, I think he is probably most likely walking into a wide receiver to roll almost immediately at, with because of Gallup probably not starting the season. And then it's James Washington or him. Worst case, he's wide receiver three in a decent offense yep. to either get you the value spike to, to then sell or to be like, hey, I like what I'm seeing. I'm going to ride this out and see what happens uh, over the next couple of years here. Um, but so Tolbert is, would you, you know, you took him over Shakir. Is that a pretty much always happening kind of deal there? Yeah. Shakir's not on my board. Even I think through four, okay. I, I I've had no interest in him. No, no. Is that the corral? fifth round draft capital for Shakir? Or? Yeah. Fifth round draft capital. Uh, you know, what is his role really going to be? I, I think he is going to kind of fill in that combination of, I would have said Cole Beasley, Isaiah McKenzie type role, kind of a a, a, a combination there. But now we see Jamison Crowder there, obviously. So I yeah. kind of think it's taking over more of that gadgety Isaiah McKenzie type role. Yeah, and so no no Dulwich or Jelani Woods considered there for tight end premium draft like this. No, and I have a lot of both of those guys, but it's been after I've taken Jalen Tolbert. If I look, you know, had a draft with Is that several the guy you're looking for picks. in the third round, pretty much every time, if you can. Yeah, Jalen Tolbert, looking at this draft board. Uh, like I said, Tyler Algier, that's another one. Third round. Yeah, that's... No chance the, you're taking Corral there? Uh, no. Okay. Well, how much no. further? We got to be in the fourth for him or end of the third? Or what are you thinking? Yeah, I, I think end of the third, if you want to take a shot, that's he went, fine. He went 310. That, yeah, that, that the, floats your boat. Yeah, it's fine. But again, like, could, could he beat out Sam Darnold? Sure. But there's too much smoke with Jimmy Garoppolo and Baker Mayfield. I, I don't even know if if he's yeah. going to have a shot. Now, let's say he does have a get a shot here. They're still most likely a top 10 pick in 2023. Right. Uh, I, I didn't look at my calendar. I'm like, what year is it now? <laughs> I think that's sort of my reservation with Ritter and 
corral are, are sort of that even if they come in yeah you can get the immediate value spike and, and maybe move off and, and get something back reload that gun um, but it seems like there's more likely than not that they could finish it inside the top 10 of draft picks again and then yeah, at that point all bets are off and and you know I feel like with with Willis I don't quite feel that way I feel like He's. I don't think the Titans are finishing in the top ten of a of a draft necessarily. Right. I, I agree with that. Um, whereas you know Atlanta would nobody would be shocked if that was the top two three pick, and you know Carolina wheels could fall off and, and same thing be five six, seven eight nine ten and and then then we're quarterback searching again. So yep, I, I kind of agree a little bit there. Unless you want to, I just I don't know who's buying into that immediate spike and being like, oh yeah, this is the guy. I'm definitely going to trade. You know, unless you're really needy in the middle of the season and just need a couple weeks of a spot start, which happens. I've been there. We've all been there of like, hey, I need a quarterback. But uh, so I, I kind of feel you on that one. But even look at Davis Mills. There are people post NFL draft. The Texans didn't get a quarterback. It's going to be his show again in 2022. And in a weak class, people are still more willing to take a Malik Willis at 112 than try to move that pick for a Davis Mills. Right. So why would Ritter or Corral be any different from a value perspective? And now we're looking at the 23 class that's loaded. I, you got to give an arm and a leg for a 23 fourth at this point. <laughs> like, you know, so I, I just don't see the upside in taking that pick unless listen, I always say, you know your league mates a lot better than I do because you're in the league. Right. If you think there's a chance to flip, if they would get a start or two, then I, I guess take a shot later in the draft. But I, I can't see it, and I can't get on board with it. All right, fair enough. All right, back on the clock at 3-4. Uh, you know, we recorded all these shows with these viewers separately. Um, Casey has some troubles with the, the internets or whatever's going on in his house. We had to separate trying to play it safe with COVID, uh, had, a, had a close contact, so making sure we don't spread anything uh, unnecessarily. So that's why we're in a separate room. It's just me and your boy Michael Bauer from Dynasty Rewind. Back on the clock at 3-4. Uh, who you got? So I got Greg Dulcich from the Denver Broncos. I like Dulcich a lot. It was a walk-on at UCLA. You know, the UCLA offense, the Chip Kelly offense, the collegiate offense, that is not the NFL offense, the Seacoast that he ran when he was with the Eagles. I hate you, Chip Kelly. That being said, not really like a big, super tight end friendly offense, but Dulcich can do it all. He can block. He can run after the catch. When he gets ahead of steam, he's a bowling ball in the open field. Trey McBride was off the board. He's obviously my tight end one. But look, everybody's high on Alberto now after the Noah fan trade, and they should be. I like Alberto. Dulcich is just better across the board. Anything Alberto can do, Dulcich is just better. That's how it is. And people are like, I believe he was a third-round draft pick. I don't have the draft right in front of me. A lot of people are really harping on draft capital this this year. Like, well, he was only a this. He was only a that. Let's not forget the player pool was significantly bigger because of COVID and people taking an extra year in college. So I think the player pool was double what it normally is. So, you know, you have a Desmond Ritter, Malik Willis, uh, Matt Crow falling to the third round. So I do want to say too, that if you have the outliers, you talked about it in your last, in the last round, that doesn't mean it's going to be the case. Like if a fourth round running back in Damian Pierce works out, it's not going to be the case every year. So just stick to your process. But Dulcich is a guy that I like a lot. And Alberto was hurt last year, too. I think he tore his ACL in, what, November-ish? Something like that. So he might not even be ready to start the season. So Dulcich could be a starter from day one. It's a good possibility there. And Russ has made uh, some of the guys in our patrons, were, they were trying to say, Russ has never made a tight end relevant. He had Jimmy Graham for two years. They're pretty, pretty good years. Hey, Other Gerald that, Everett helped us win a championship last year because we had Darren Waller and we had to find someone to plug. I mean, he, he does seem to like the tight end. He just can't he get does. one that stays healthy. Will Disley had some some run, you know? like There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Russell Wilson knows how to utilize the tight end. And they're going to let him cook. I hate that corny phrase. They're going to let him cook in Denver. They built him a brand new kitchen, brand new utensils, pots hanging down from the center console, just ready yeah. to go. 
So he's going to be fine. Dulcich is going to be fine. You can't cover anybody or everybody in this Denver offense. And we don't know what's going to be going on with Jerry Judy. See, he got arrested last weekend. So they're trying to downplay that big time. Um, you know, I don't know exactly what's going to happen with that. The NFL could or could not suspend him. You know, we'll see what happens. At least there wasn't any type of violence involved with the arrest, but the arrest is definitely alarming. And, you know, always always been a little bit concerned between the, the helmet, you know, between the ears with, with Jerry Judy. Um, but phenomenal talent. And, you know, yeah. like you said, you can't cover everyone. Broncos are going to be must-see TV. Russell Wilson must have confidence in that offensive coordinator to let him cook or he wouldn't have accepted a trade to go there. Uh, you know, everyone's crowning Albert O because they traded Fant away. And, you know, I don't see why Dolchich couldn't come in there and, 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 and take some away. It is tough for a rookie tight end. But, I mean, this is this is tight end premium, so take your shot, you know? Yeah, for sure. All right, and back on the clock. Hold it down for the nerds. Mr. Price. Mr. Mr. Garrett Price at uh, Dynasty, Dynasty Price. Price on Twitter. 3-5, you had Walker at 1-5, Zamir at 2-5. Uh, and who's who's going who's gonna to get that third round pick for you? Yeah, I moved away from the running back position finally, and uh, I went with Khalil Shakir, uh, a guy that I have been a fan of his abilities, his talents, and one of my main comps for him was Amon Ra St. Brown. And it's interesting because a similar thing happened to Amon Ra last year that happened to Khalil Shakir where – I thought he was about a round, round and a half more talented than he got drafted. I thought Khalil Shakir would be at the end of the third, beginning of the fourth round. He ended up falling into the fifth round, mm -hmm. and you know I thought that was I thought that was too low. We we see a guy that's got really good hands. He can make spectacular, spectacular catches. Uh, everything about his character, his work ethic is off the charts, according to all reports that I've seen. Uh, and he's really good after the catch. He can make plays uh, in the open field. So you you look at the player. I liked the player quite a bit. And even though the draft capital was lower than I wanted it to be, I love where he went. Buffalo, uh, it's Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs is their receiving core right now. Now, right. we know that Gabe Davis really came on strong there at the end of the season. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. He still hasn't had a regular season over 600 yards yet sure. in his two years. So. By no means is he an established star, but even if he does end up being that guy, I think he's a great fit as a slot receiver. He's going to get open. He does a lot of the technically, uh, the the small things technically sound, and so he's going to get open. He's going to be able to catch passes. And I think he's a really good fit in this offense that throws the ball a lot with Josh Allen. So right. uh, th this was kind of the end of a tier for me as far as wide receivers go. So I was excited he was still there at three five. Yeah, I, I like that pick. We just did kind of a late round. Uh, guys to stab on and Shakir is definitely a guy that once we get into the third even sometimes into the fourth round if he's around I'll, I'll I might try to see if I can arrange a little trade to uh, see if I can scoop him up because I agree I like yeah I like the player and I like the landing spot even if it isn't quite this year where we see him fully get a role I think he could earn a role Crowder has never been healthy I think that might only be a year or two deal that he's got sure. like you said you haven't really seen we th we're projecting Gabe Davis we like Gabe Davis everyone saw the playoff game so everyone's excited right. about Gabe Davis you know it wasn't a regular season game nobody's forgetting that Gabe Davis game and it's and it's just a an older aging Diggs which I think Diggs is still going to be just fine but uh, I agree with you there man I like I like the pick all right we got Angelo back on the clock at three six what you thinking here man yeah, for me it was it was interesting because it's tight end premium. So right. um, this is where I really looked at look at the tight ends and see who's in the board. And a guy like Jelani Woods is interesting because of the the size and the athleticism. Like you don't see many tight ends coming to the NFL looking like him. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in an offense that's going to use the tight end a bit. We look at what you've been thirsty look, for a good one. Yeah, like think of what Matt Ryan did with Austin Hooper. Yeah, remember when Austin Hooper was the top what was he top three tight end that one year? Was it two years right. ago? Um, you're going to get a guy with plus talent from Hooper um, with an offense that's going to be obviously centered around the run. Um, and there's not, you know, besides Pittman, like. Yeah, we're wondering who Pierce that, is going to be Pierce the next is, guy. Yeah, Pierce is okay. I, th I think he's more of a complimentary piece in the NFL. Um, but a guy like Jelani Woods is going to cause some matchup problems. Yeah. Um, at, you know, 6'7", you know, 260. Like, this is a, this is a big dude. Like, he's. Good it's athlete. gonna cause some problems. Really good athlete. Yeah, and it's it. You don't see guys like that kind of you know walking around the NFL too. Like 
Right. Th- those guys are rare. So um, I'll take my shot at a guy like that um, at, at three, six. My other pick was going to be um, Pierre Strong Jr., who I had actually in my Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl tier on AGS. So at the basically the second talent tier, third talent tier. Right. Um, okay. And I would probably take him if it wasn't tight end premium. But okay. in tight end premium, I'm going to take my shot. And a guy like Johnny Woods. That, those were pretty much all my follow-up questions. Was I know we had you on, talked a lot about Pierre Strong, and if it wasn't premium, what, what would you have done? So um, we can move on to you the took fourth the words round. Right out of my pick mind. here, but you know where? What, how do you feel about Strong, real quick? And you know, didn't get quite you, what you wanted, and probably not the best landing spot. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's it's kind of two prong. Like I'm happy he was what, fourth round capital, so happy there, but unhappy it was the new England Patriots from a near term sense. Right. Um, also kind of happy. I can kind of get every draft I want right. because most people are thinking, okay, you know, the England Patriots like, you know, behind Ramondre and Harris and James White is still lurking. Yeah. Um, but I think he has a good chance of, of taking the James White role if he can pass protect and then kind of getting a plus role from there. If you get a James White plus role in fantasy, you're pretty much a locked and loaded RB too. Every be relevant, yeah. And I think that's what I'm seeing. I think he's he walks in as the second best pure rusher, probably behind Harris right now. Um, but man, I, I think in two years he has a legitimate chance of being, you know, an every week RB two if they don't, you know, do the same thing they did <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and draft another Pierre Strong next right. year. Right. Um, how funny if they drafted um, um, Devon A. Chain next year. How hilarious would that be? <laughs> that if you just taunting me for that. Yeah. But, but no, I, I think that's your guy. I, well, A. Chain. Do you like him? Yeah, he's he's pretty fucking good. Yeah. Um, but it's similar style, like, but also just super, super, super fast. Yeah. Uh, he's you know he's a track star. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's probably the closest thing on field that we've probably seen to Chris Johnson since Chris Johnson in terms of just play speed. Like, dude flies. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm betting that, you know, this is a rookie mock, but if we're talking about Devon A. Chain, he's probably going to be a second-round pick in the NFL draft because he'll run high 4-2 probably. Right. You know, he's a 10 100 meter. Like, he'll probably run high 4-2, low 4-3. He has a chance to produce without Spiller there. So right. He's probably going to um, be for productive me, this year. Like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and you know, pass, can pass catch. Bit, right. So. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. If, I mean, the, the, the expanded workload is going to be interesting for him, too, to see what he has. I mean, if he has like a, you know, a 1,500, 1,600 total yard season, I don't see any reason why he's not a, a at the very least, like a, like a day to pick. Right? Yeah. All right. Pretty well, easy. We got a little Debbie in there for your pleasure in the third round. So. All right, so we got Kane back on the clock. It's three seven. We're rounding into that third round. Where's the value here, Kane? What do you got? Well, again. I think the best values that you can get just in any draft for the most part, right, lie in three main camps. The first being if it's tight end premium, right, you have to be looking for some of those tight ends, right? That's sure. that's the first thing. And if the value is not there at the tight end, you need to look. My next spot is at the running back and any running back that can be second on their depth chart for their team. That's who mm-hmm. I'm taking with my third, fourth, fifth whatever pick after that right um and then the the last category is a second uh, a day two wide receiver right i don't care what team they went to it's a day two wide receiver so mm-hmm. right now the, there was there was a running back who is clearly uh second on their depth chart right now and that's tyler algier Algier. i don't know how to say his name sorry tyler yeah algier um, it's, it's french i like it <laughs> i don't know i just like saying french yeah that words. was fancy <laughs> this yeah. definitely got more listens because of that. hundred percent. Sure. Like that was a hundred percent. We're big. From we're that. big in no. France. So yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I can feel that. Yeah. Uh, but, but so the reason why I went with Tyler Allgaier, that's what I'm going to call him. And uh, Tyler, mm-hmm. feel free to just send me a text. I know Tyler, I know you have my phone number. Just send me a text. <laughs> send and let me, let me know that I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> like not a big deal. I yeah. have, um, have your mom reach out to have your mom reach out to Trey Lance's mom and we'll get this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. um, so the reason why I like him, right, is other than Cordero Patterson, name another running back on the Falcons. Yeah, Damian Williams, I guess, is pretty much all I got. 
Well, that was and a fun exercise. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like it's like just Damian Williams, and you're like, ah! is Quadre Allison still over there? Is he is he on the team? Probably. He's got to be playing fullback at this point. Like, yeah, y- y- you know, it's there's just no one else that that is really inspiring confidence, right? And you're dealing you, your main like competition is what thirty year old Cordero Patterson. Which right. I love Cordero Patterson, right? I think that is such a fun story um, that yeah. he found success with, with the Falcons. But realistically, right, that means Allgaier is going to get some work, right? That means that he's going to get the ball. So I'm fine with it. Um, yeah. Again, this, he's second this extremely late for it, most drafts that I've been in to see for him sure. go at 3 7. For sure. I've seen him go yeah, in the I, second round a lot. I, I think. One of the most fun tweets that I ever saw about uh, uh, Tyler Allgaier, and I think it came from one of the people that was in this mock, Ryan McDowell. Um, and I think he said something to the effect of, like, I'm already ready to sell high on Tyler Allgaier. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I'm 100% with you. But, like, right there. at the 307, like, I'm going to be able to move him again. You know, whether. Mm-hmm. Whether it's next year, whether whether it's, it's just a third, season. like re- reloading that bullet, which is probably going to be an up. You're, I would almost certainly guarantee you're getting an upsell from from that three seven. Yeah, you could but, get more than a third. I would think you could at least like get the second, give the three back or something. You know. Yeah, and I think there's there's two kind of things that I, that I think about a lot in, in rookie drafts, right? And so I was looking at last year's picks and it's like where can i get a re-roll right so the wide receiver i drafted didn't hit i'm trying to just get another pick so i can re-roll that dice mm-hmm. right yeah and that's what i'm trying to do right um, but but with all guy i think you're getting some value gain there um yeah right cordero patterson isn't going to get all the touches i think mm, all guy is going to fit well into that offense like he's going to be mike davis but um, like, but one tenth of a second faster. <laughs> Maybe a better receiver, younger, yeah. fresher. And and the fun part about rookies, right, is if they do anything, right? Especially rookie running backs, they go up. Oh my god! Especially sure. the ones this late, and it's stupid, right? Like, oh, Tyler Allgaier, like, took a breath of fresh air. Let's move him up. You know, it's it's like right. any news piece moves these guys up a little bit. So like if I can get any 23 second, that's great. Like that's a yeah, great I mean, You value. already got a news piece saying that Patterson's maybe not even going to play as much running back right. this year. Like, right. you yep. know, there's a little news piece. Like, <laughs> and then, and so it's like, Oh, you think that he's a starting running back. Okay. Now give me a 23 second and a 23 third. Right. Right. And so not only did I get to reroll, not even knowing if all guy or hits, but I also got a 23 second on top. Right. So like anytime you can make those value increases and the one thing that like people always come back with on on this strategy is like you didn't get the full value. 100 percent. Right. Right. You could have lost. You might be losing this trade. Yeah. And if Tyler Allgaier hits, sure. Right. But when you do this eight times. Right. And to only two hit, you're still coming out ahead. Right. So you might as well try to do this as much as possible rather than trying to hold out hope and keep holding, holding, holding. And right. then all of a sudden now, you have six Jalen Ragers on your team. Right. Now you've got a few twos, a few threes. Maybe you got a first or, or, or a couple firsts. And now you're able to, you know, see what those roster requirements are, like you were talking on your earlier picks and be able to yep. go out and get the proven guy who, you know, you can plug in every week. And it's probably going to be, you know, ready to go next year as well as maybe, you know, Tyler Algier and Damian Pierce. Maybe, maybe yep. not. Yeah, I think this is a fantastic pick. I think the value is awesome. And I would I'd have to take Algier probably over several of the picks that have already gone off the board. So I think I think that's a great pick there at three seven. So Thank so you. far, I mean, yeah, you're really holding strong to your word. This is an outstanding draft. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love this to happen in real life. <laughs> All right. The FFD is back up three eight. 
Three eight, yeah. Casey, what do you, you you made these picks? You did not consult me making these picks. Who you got at three eight? Well, Algier just went, and Jelani Woods went, and Dolchich is already gone, and Tolbert's gone. Uh, so, um, I I took the shot on the on the cheaper of the two Packer wide receivers, and took Romeo Dobbs or Dubs. 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 I wish it was Dubs. I think it's Dobbs. I think it's Dobbs. But uh, you know. Really, it's not like I studied the crap out of some Romeo tape there. Uh, but, you know, I have gone back since and watched a little bit. And, you know, give me, give me the cheaper guy with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, that, that's, you know, played Looks a good decent in that amount of college football. Yeah, and has been pretty solid production-wise. And, and the tape looks half decent. So, sure, sign me up for that. We're taking we're – we're at 3-8 here. I mean – No bad picks. I could have taken Pierre third. Strong or, or Matt Corral. I wouldn't have been upset with that. He slid two more picks. It's, you know, some could argue that Corral's was probably the better probably pick. probably the pick. Because um, it's a quarterback and it's super flex. Yeah. And if you get an option at a potential starting yeah. guy, I just never was that into him. And I just yeah, don't think that either. I don't know that he's going to stick even if he gets the opportunity. But you could get a D- okay flip for somebody sleeping at the wheel, I guess, maybe. Um, but so, uh, Dubs is a Dubs, Dubs, Dobbs is a, uh, is a guy that I'm consistently taking a shot on at the end of the third there. Pierre Strong. Every you know we had Angelo on and he was beating the table. He's like he's got to get into a zone scheme and then the Patriots take him and it's like and no one likes that. And well, so he's just, got a lot of guys in front of him, but it's like a fee- I mean, free Pierre Strong after Carroll and and Romeo, I would I would take Strong for sure. I like Strong a good bit. That was that was somebody that I could have absolutely seen myself taking there. All right, three eight, Dubes. All right, we're back at 3-9 here with David Wilsey. Um, just fantastic running back dialogue throughout this. So hopefully Love that will continue. Backs, baby. Uh, at 3-9, who are you going with? Can't see you taking a, a, a wide receiver here, no? This one, I don't believe is so much of a reach. <laughs> I'm going to stick on brand and we're going to go Hassan Haskins. I think probably went a little lit, little bit maybe later than he would have had he been able to do, run through the full you know lead up to the draft and everything like that had he not suffered the injury late in the season and stuff um so we don't know exactly how fast he is but he's got a workhorse profile and i guess the titans know what they like because right. julius chestnut who landed there as an undrafted free agent also has a workhorse profile in the model Derrick Henry is a workhorse plus. Uh, so, I mean, they they know what they want. So that in hand is good for Haskins as far as landing spot in general. We, they, I mean, there's a chance that King Henry is not a Titan next year. You know, mm-hmm. following this season, there's, yeah. there's no Three guarantees. million dead in his contract, so they could get yeah. out of it. But... You know, and, and he is going to be... He's, he's going to be... If he's not already 28, he will be soon, so... And man, does he have some carries now? You know, he used to say, you know, he had the light workload right. when uh, he was younger, so he's going to be okay now. But dude, they made they up for lost love, time. They <laughs> love to just pump this man up the middle and, and just thirty carries a game. And we, as fantasy, we love it because he's not catching a ton of passes. Even though started out last year, it looked like he was going to do a little bit more in that. But you know, they tricked us with that. Derrick Henry offseason, you know, one-handed catch video that they release <laughs> every year and then a couple games where he catches some balls and then it just kind of all went away again and then injury and right. all of that. But He is a threat to take a screen 98 yards, though, you know. At any time, at any time. And, but, you know, I think I don't think anybody will ever understand why they don't just try and utilize that a little bit more often, just get the big man in space. But... So we have possibility of Henry not being there next year uh, if they do choose to move on from him. Uh, we have Haskins with the potential fourth round capital. They they got him, you know, as a potential starter. They would have him fairly cheap, uh, and same sort of skill set as Henry, just not obviously not, not as big and as fast. Right. So we wouldn't expect. 30 touches a game like they have have given him but maybe i mean maybe it's a a thing kind of similar to how he was brought in with um 
DeMarco, DeMarco Murray, yeah. how, you know, they kind of lightly use him. So maybe Henry is the guy who just gets the major work and Haskins can kind of work in, get his feet wet, get a little used to it and potentially move into a starter's role next year. Who knows uh, what happens with Malik Willis as far as does he take over next year? Does he take over at all? You know, so I think that would that would benefit the running game to an extent as we've seen in Baltimore. But it, at the same time, it also kind of caps, you know, it kind of raises the floor but drops the ceiling mm-hmm. a little bit. Because they won't, those sense. running quarterbacks won't dump it down to the running backs in the passing game. Also, exactly. take away TD upsides and exactly, call their exactly. own number on the one yard line and whatnot. Yeah. So for fantasy purposes, I probably would prefer it, you know, not to be for just Haskins fantasy purposes, probably would prefer it not to be um, Willis so much. But then at the same time, I mean, that increases if he's good, you know, Lamar, the the whole offense gets better. So, you know, you, you kind of have to try and balance it out like, like you were saying, you know, a, few, a bit fewer scoring opportunities in the red zone maybe, but maybe more scoring opportunities in overall. And, yeah, right. as far as just the offense being better. So, I mean, I don't think it would be bad, just maybe not the optimal situation for him specifically. But um, I guess, you know, that we're really just kind of hoping that it's a situation like we saw with Henry worked in slowly and maybe he can take over that role if they do choose to move on from – from the king next year haskins was a weird one because it seemed like everybody was kind of out on him kind of actually dogging him talking about how he wasn't any good and i wasn't really understanding why i mean i didn't study a ton of haskins but I, you know michigan's on a lot you see a lot of michigan i've seen a lot of haskins over the years yeah. pretty good back um and now it seems like he is starting to gain a little bit of buzz here uh wh- i mean if you why do you think people were initially out on him not a pass catcher yeah. Not you know not hasn't shown a, a super diverse receiving skill set. Uh, I mean he chases Zach Charbonnet out the building. Yeah, you know so I mean take that for what it is. I'm not a huge Charbonnet fan, but it's uh, it it means something to me. You know is similar with like Ramondre. Ramondre came from you know community college, Syracuse CC walked in, was the most effective back in the first year, and then just took over even after a suspension, like chased TJ Pledger and Trey Sermon out the building pretty much. I mean, so like if you if you can force another, you know, highly touted back to to transfer, I mean, a lot of people say, you know, who cares what the hell they're going for their best opportunity. But if they're the better back, they should have forced the other guy to transfer it, you right. know, is kind of my thinking, like they saw the writing on the wall and they chose to move on to get their better opportunity because they weren't going to get it playing with this guy. So, I mean, if you like Charbonnet moving to pack 12, you know, you, there should be no reason you'd be out on, on Haskins, Haskins yeah. unless it's just receiving skill set, sure. you know, like that, that can really only be, like the only thing, I mean, he's not the most efficient back, but he's got size. So I guess if you're if you're going to get hit a lot, at least be big. Right. Right. You know? right. So. so it seems to be I, I, this seems to be a pick to me that recently I've seen trending up a little bit. Um, so Hassan Haskins at the three nine. Where is he at currently? Uh, I don't actually know. I don't have that information in front of me, but it does seem like in the rookie drafts that I've done a little more recently and and mocks that he stays pretty consistently at least drafted, whereas like mocks before the NFL draft, like he wasn't really getting drafted. So Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah, – yeah, I mean, I – I love the landing spot for the skill set, man. And that's kind of been my theme so far is, right. you know, we're, we're going for situ- opportunity. land, yeah, opportunity and landing spots. And it's kind of been, you know, good for all, all three of them as far as their potential, you know, and so we're able to outlook a little bit of the, the question marks in the profiles. Yeah. So. All right, man. Well, I'm, I'm excited to see, who potentially the fourth running back is here, but for now it's Hassan Haskins at three, nine. 
All right, so we're at three ten. We're getting into the the doldrums of a draft here. Is this is this uh, who, who do you got, Jeff? So I took Matt Corral here, and you know this was probably the easiest draft that I did all year. You, you know, t- mm-hmm. taking Chris Olave, taking Trey McBride, and then then still being able to get Matt Corral and placing that chip on that quarterback and super flex here at the towards the end of the third round. Um, I love that pick there, and you know I think that if you're sitting in the mid to late third round and Corral's on the board, grab him. You know, I look at it last year. We were grabbing. We thought last year was a much stronger draft, and most people were grabbing Davis. Mills at the beginning of the third or even at the very end of the second, you know, we had Kyle Trask kind of in the similar area and Kellen Mond in the Kellen similar, Mond, similar yeah. area. Um, they were all kind of going right there. And, you know, we see great return, I think, already on that pick. If you used a third round pick on Davis Mills, you have to be pretty happy right now. Yeah. And so Corral sets up as a similar situation where if you see him drop into the third round, I'd grab him there. And, you know, it, we should feel good about that. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm, I'm, I was again two spots behind you. That was it was Corral, and I, I went ahead and took the shot on the other Packers wide receiver, uh, just for you know some upside there. But it, Corral's probably the pick. I mean, I, I agree with you there. That's that should be a a nice little auto pick in the mid mid to third round. Now some people will argue the capital and that you know whatever the percentage is playing the percentage game. So, you know, Man, there's the just the third round. Who there's cares? no way I can even take him there. Why waste my pick? There's no way he's ever going to be any good, but just don't why not make your picks if you're playing percentages? Cause none of these dudes are going to hit, you know, based on the percentage. So just, just don't even make a pick. Just let it, just let your timer expire and let the next guy make a pick. Cause there's no point in making picks. I, I can't, <laughs> These, these percentages are just driving me up a fucking wall because nobody's good after the first round. Even the first round is kind of a crapshoot. So, like, what are we doing here? Take your guy. Take who you like. I'm curious where you had Corral pre-draft or amongst the quarterbacks. Pre-draft, I had him as quarterback four or five. Like, I had him and Sam Howell yeah. kind of right there. Yeah. Um, I had Malik Willis number one pre-draft. I had um, Desmond Ritter number two pre-draft. And then I had Kenny Pickett number three pre-draft. But I had... I had a decent gap between um, Ritter and Pickett. There was talk that Ritter was getting first round buzz go- heading into the draft. Mm-hmm. And Willis, obviously, I mean, there was talk he was getting top five buzz heading into the draft. And obviously things um, that buzz wasn't true. And you know, things <laughs> changed there. Um, but at the same time, I just viewed the rushing ability, the athleticism on those other two quarterbacks kind of as differentiator. And Crow, I just had some questions about um, we kind of, we're hoping that he'd take a step forward. We never really saw it this year. And Mm -hmm. so that was kind of the thing, but um, he does land in a pretty good spot to potentially earn immediate playing time. Unless, Mm -hmm. you know, another trade a subsequent trade for a Jimmy Garoppolo or something like that happens. Um, It's really going to be Matt Corral against Sam Darnold. And it does sounds like they would rather prefer Matt Corral wins the job. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. This is, it's really, not not too far out of the question that he could walk himself into starting some games and seeing if he can if he can parlay that into you know getting get another season or you know they've, they've been pretty active in the market of trying to get the elite quarterback so i don't know if he's necessarily safe but if the show's good you took him in the third round who cares i mean in <laughs> the third round at that, right. right right well and they and the thing of it too is, you know, we, we talked about it with the Trey McBride that um, that moment that Marat Corral is going to be the starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. You could flip him for a 23 second. Like immediately I, I have a feeling that um, right. just if you were to do that in your leagues, offer that into everybody in your league and somebody's going to bite in the super flex league. And all of a sudden you turned a 22 third in a bad class into a 23 second in a good class. Right. Yeah. I, I love it. That's a that's a that's a strong move. I like the corral pick again. Some people would argue against it, but it's funny that you said kind of what you were leading up, what you let off with. And this is like, well, I took Olave and then I took McBride and Corral. We said the same thing before you got on. We were like, I think he just he basically just grabbed whoever the best guy was, and it really just fell uh, really well for you there. So I, I really like everything that you did so far. That's that's how I try to every single rookie draft. I just grab the best guy. And, you know, I don't I'm not trying to build a starting lineup in, you know, we're in May. I'm not I don't really care what my starting lineup look, looks like now. Like I will load guys that I think could gain value, assuming an injury hits on my bench mm-hmm. now. But, um, you know, if we kind of get to that, 
even like week one, week two, like, I, I don't know. I tend to lean more zero running back than a lot of people. And, and I'm mm-hmm. comfortable operating in that space because I think you can find somebody to put into those spots. But the other thing too, when you're starting 10 guys and you, especially if you've locked in two elite quarterbacks and you're starting 10 guys, that impact of not having a good running back two is much smaller than, you know, when, when we're operating in a, a redraft league where you've got two running backs, two wide receivers, one quarterback and one tight end and a flex, you right. know, you're it's night and day, like how much you can cover by having depth and talent at wide receivers. And so that's how I always lean in rookie drafts. Best player available or i'll look at players that are able to spike value what is the ceiling on a a pick that i have here versus um i'm less concerned about just trying to hit a double because um you know when you try to hit a double you strike out and so i I just kind (laughs) of view it that way a lot of striking out on home run swings too though you know well of course but you still hit a home run when you connect (laughs) You didn't just get you just get didn't get strung out on uh, or uh, hung out on the second base there. I need the percentages right. of strikeouts to double versus. <laughs> well, but you'd never be able to measure that because you were like, were you swinging for the fences or just a double? You know, <laughs> you wouldn't right, be able right. To figure it out. All right, I like the pick. All right, we're back with Matt Hicks holding down the three eleven spot. You know, the the fun picks are 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 kind of dwindling down a little bit, uh, but still some some fun shots out there. So who you got at, at 311 here? Man, I got to tell you, this round, I'm tilting. I'm on full tilt. I mean, Price takes my guy Khalil Shakur at 305. Hassan Haskins is my favorite RB0, and I love to build my dynasty rosters, you know, kind of in an RB0. Hassan Haskins goes off at 309. I love that pick. My man Matt Corral goes at 310. So I'm scrambling. I'm tilting. But – I took Tyquan Thornton out of Baylor now with the Patriots. I got to tell you, right? Like rookie big board, we go deep. I I study too many of these guys Uh, going into draft weekend. I watched, I think it was like 97, 98 guys. Right. And I see Tyquan Thornton's name go off the board to new England at that draft capital. And I am pissed because I hadn't (laughs) watched his tape. I'm like, how are we going to, how am I watching 90 something guys? And I'm not watching Taekwon <laughs> Thornton. He, you know, he goes so high to new England. Old Billy B. So got you. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like burnt out, man. I'm, I'm doing all of this on draft weekend. And I wake up on the morning of day three and I'm watching his tape and I'm like, all right, no, I actually, I get this. Right. And, you know, thinking about a little bit more envisioning Taekwon Thornton and what he could be, in the Patriots offense, you know, it's kind of an upgraded Nelson Aguilar role. That's how I got sold on Taekwon Thornton. Field stretcher, he's athletic. He certainly has the speed. We know that. That's sure. why he got drafted. And you know what? I mean, Mac Jones, he was good at Alabama, just kind of tossing that ball up, <laughs> letting somebody run down the field and jump up and get it. So, you know, at 311, uh, in a full tilt mode, <laughs> because <laughs> I just had three guys I wanted go just in front of me. I'll take Tyquan Thornton at 311. It feels like a, a good spot to take that kind of dart throw. There are no bad picks at 311. Yeah. Exactly. Right. right? You just got to have some fun with it. Right. Um, so obviously you're getting, you know, the, the capital there, which, you know, is important until nobody cares. And then uh, the capital <laughs> doesn't matter anymore. And, um, you know, I'm I'm fine with it. That, that's kind of the the guy on my list of like, hey, if you, I got a list of guys that are the shots, kind of in the third, fourth round, and you know he would be on there. You know, I know Velas Jones is old, but you know he'd he'd be on the take a shot list. Why not? Um, so you know, I, I got I got really nothing to say about that. I, I might have squeezed Pierre Strong in there. I know he's kind of buried, but and I I like the player a good bit. I don't really know all that much about Thornton besides he ran really fast. Um, I was fiftieth overall in the draft. Right capital drink so you you would have taken corral there if if possible yeah yeah i like matt corral now you know call it take lock call it what you will it's so hard to evaluate quarterbacks but going into the draft uh, just based on tape itself uh matt corral was my best tape review you know i expected kenny pickett to get much higher draft capital so corral went in as my quarterback too but I like Matt Corral a lot. I think he has a great mechanical foundation. He's got great arm strength, right? We need to work on the mental processing. And I think folks watching Matt Corral tape, uh, you know, it was a tale of two quarterbacks. He suffered a, an injury midseason that he kept playing through, right? 
And so if you look at him early season, I think you see a much better quarterback when healthy. And I, th- and I wouldn't sleep on Matt Corral's athleticism either. You know, he's not a scrambler. Yeah. He's not Malik Willis uh, just in terms of pure athleticism, but he has good mobility. Right. Sure. And so I like Matt Corral and you look at what he did well at, at Mississippi, he distributed the ball. And I think he's got that opportunity to distribute right in Carolina. I mean, you have DJ Moore there. You have CMC. I haven't given up on my boy Terrace Marshall yet, yeah. right? You oh, have let's go. Uh, Tommy Tremble. You have some good guys just to be able to kind of distribute the ball to. And so I've been telling folks, I wouldn't be shocked if Matt Corral starts half the season, three yeah. quarters of the season. I think Matt Rule wants to get him in there. I think that's the most appealing part is there isn't that – much of a hiccup to a path for him to get starts. Sam Darnold either playing poorly or or getting hurt. I mean, you can't bank on injuries, but I mean, he hasn't been the most healthy guy. And at the very least, he'll get mono. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I I once we get into the the mid third there, and a couple of those other guys that I really like go off the board, I'm I'm definitely targeting some corral in, in any sort of super flex. Was there this was a tight end premium mock. Was there any tight ends that you were thinking about taking a shot on at that point or not really? I'll tell you there's two tight ends, actually three tight ends still on the board that I've been trying to soak up the value on. Uh Kate Otten at four three or oops. It's all good. You're fine. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you the shot to edit that out. Nah, it's all good. <laughs> I'm looking at Kate Otten is still available on the board. You know, Otten is, is really fun. He's an athletic tight end uh, coming out of Washington. He only, he suffered a late season injury as well. And I think if he hadn't, folks would have been higher on him. When I tell you the Washington offense, uh, especially the passing game was broken last year. I'm being kind. Like the offense was bad. The NFL's been high on Kate Otten and listen, I mean, I know we want Gronk to come back and we all want to manifest that for our own entertainment, but Gronk doesn't come back. Kate Otten is the athletic tight end that's there to replace him, whether it's this year or next year. So you have a real opportunity there with him. You know, Daniel Bellinger is somebody I really like uh, in terms of being an athletic tight end. I know I said I wanted no part of the Giants offense, but you look at that tight end opportunity. I mean, Evan Ingram is gone and they did not try to replace it through free agency, right? Yeah. They just let that position sit. Ricky and so Seals Bellinger, and nothing else really. Has, yeah. Nothing else in the, the training camp reports and, you know, no, right. I this sure. early on, but the training camp reports earlier that he's running with the ones and it's not just the rookie ones. Like he is playing mm-hmm. with the first team offense. So, you know, those are certainly two guys I've got my eye on. Yeah. All right, man. Well, We'll see you back here at 411. All right, so we're back with Derek uh, 312. Uh, you can find him at dbro underscore FFB. And, of course, Fantasy Pros. You don't need an introduction at this point or probably in the beginning of this thing. But right. at 312, what do you got? A couple interesting guys left here. I mean, nobody super exciting, but... Well, I stared between a few different guys. I mean... Um... Keontae Ingram, who went right behind my pick, I was kind of looking at, um, not going to lie. I mean, at this point in the draft, um, if Hassan Haskins would have fallen to me, I probably would have taken him. But none of those guys, I mean, I, one, I bypassed, and two, didn't make it to me. So I went with my guy, even though I hate, 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 big old capital H, hate the landing spot. I took Pierre Strong at 312. Um I'm still trying to wrap my head around this landing spot and process this because it's just weird, guys. Mm -hmm. Like the Patriots have had a a prototype and and a back that they kind of look for. And honestly, that fits their their ground game scheme. They've been a which changes from week to week. Sorry. Well, I mean, but honestly, if you look at how they run their 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 rush game, it's it's a lot of uh, power. It's a lot of gap schemes and stuff. Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, both fit that. You can even go back to other days, like when they were ground and pound with Corey Dillon, Legarrette Blunt, all these other guys. So them taking a guy like Pierre Strong, and now we're hearing like, okay, he's going to be a satellite back. That's not that was not on my bingo card. Didn't mm-hmm. see that one coming because Pierre Strong won. He is really, really damn good at inside outside zone, but you put him in other concepts, eh, it's kind of questionable. I mean, he's not the best tackle breaker. It's really plant your foot and get upfield. Like I, I, I talked about him all the entire draft cycle as being like the discount version of Brees Hall, 
And so to see him land with New England, I, I hate the landing spot. But at this point in the draft, we're betting on talent mm-hmm. and talent winning out. And I think Pierre Strong is a talented, talented player. We saw that at the Combine. You saw that even at the FCS level. He brought, I mean, he played extremely well, even from a young age, and produced all the way through college. So at this point in the draft, I had to stop the fall for Pierre Strong. Yeah, it seemed like I think you said it capped it off there pretty well. Like you just you drafted the talent that was there, which is you know, if he would have got the capital, that there was you know some people that would have had him maybe as high as the beginning of the second round. Uh, yep because of of the profile and and the talent that he has so i mean walking um, into the process he was an rb i want to say he was my rb3 rb3 rb4 mm-hmm. um i have to go through my ranks and see where he fell which he he tumbled a little bit right but and, and i mean just based off of talent and his upside at the next level that's where i ranked him in this class it was like okay you got kenneth walker you got Brees, and i was like somebody tell me why not pierre strong yeah so yeah, I mean, we had Angelo on, and he he had him as his RB two pre draft. He he yep. really liked him. So I know I know he loves An- I know Angelo loves Pierre Strong for good reason. Right, right. There's something there. So uh, Pierre Strong three twelve. All right, man. Last round, first pick. Who you got here? What are you thinking, Mister McDowell? You know, in the uh, I took Brian Robinson last last pick at the 3.01, and in the third and fourth rounds of rookie drafts, I love to take stabs on running backs. I think uh, we typically see more late round running backs uh, return some uh, some early value compared to wide receivers. Sure. Uh, so typically, I'm looking for a running back in in these uh, these pick with these picks outside the top 24. So I went running back here again, Keontae Ingram, Arizona Cardinals uh, with the 4.01. So yeah, yeah, love love Ingram here, love that value. And you know, it, 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 lately, just over the past couple of days, actually, his his values probably changed a little bit, right? Uh, compared to uh, to to where he might be now. Of course, uh, Arizona just brought in the veteran Daryl Williams. So that hurts Ingram's uh, short-term upside. I, it looked like he might be able to walk right into that that number two role there behind uh, James Conner. Probably not going to be uh, quite so easy for him at this point. Uh, Which so that- we did this mock week. You know, a couple of weeks ago now at this point at least. So, you know, that was way before that signing, which, I mean, how much does that adjust your uh, your pick there? Would you would you change it at this point, or are you still like Ingram enough in the long term that you, you would stick with that pick? Uh, looking at the other picks, I'd, I'd probably stick with him. Uh, it, I feel like in drafts I've been choosing between Keontae, Keontae Ingram and Hassan Haskins. Uh, and, and Haskins, of course, went back in the middle of the third. Mm-hmm. Um Checking out our draft board here. Um, Does a guy like Kyron come into play with you, for you? No, not really. Honestly, no. just just don't trust him to to, to earn a role. Um, one player I don't think he was drafted, unless I'm overlooking him. And and I know I just said I look for uh, look for running backs with these picks, but a wide receiver I'm liking is uh, is Calvin Austin. Yeah, uh, and I already drafted. No. Okay, I already took George Pickens, so um, not sure if that would be a good thing or bad to, to double down on those Steelers wide receivers. But uh, again, they have had su- some success yeah. finding them. But Maybe Austin would be a guy I would consider with uh, with the recent news. The law of averages of Pittsburgh's hit rates with receivers, it probably isn't the worst right. uh, franchise to double down on receiver picks. And one of the points yeah. that a lot of people have been making in this industry, Mark, is that you know, you're not – you're not filling out a starting lineup with these four yeah. picks. So take who you like, you know, especially in the later rounds. Take your guy. Go with what's in your plums, you know. Go with the guy you like because there's not a – you know, we just had Garrett on, um, and then he's at the 1-5 spot. You know, he said that uh, um, there's not a lot of consensus once you get to the fourth round. So it's not like you're going to yeah. egregiously reach for a guy, you know. Just take who – take your take your poison. Yeah, I don't think there's much. I don't think there's much consensus throughout the entire draft, Agreed. right? I mean, 
Hall is, is pretty locked in at 101. Uh, again, thanks for, getting yep. me, thanks for getting me that easy pick. <laughs> but um, even at 102, 103, you can make a case for several different wide receivers. You can make a case for Kenneth Walker Let's that high. That. <laughs> you can make a case for, for Kenny Pickett if you need the quarterback and, and trust him. So there's so many ways you can go. And, and that just means, you know, don't trade down. If you've got the three or four and you really like Garrett Wilson, you better just take him. Yeah. Don't trade down two or three spots and expect to, right. to grab him you there. You just don't know. Yep. Yeah. All right, man. Well, we appreciate the time. If you want to stick around for a second after this, we've just been asking everybody to recap. So, uh, again, really appreciate everything you've done. Really appreciate the uh, time spent, and it was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. It was a fun time. All right. Last pick. For Mr. Troy King here at T King Mode on Twitter, contributor for Yahoo and, and the Football Guys. All right, man, last pick of the draft. Who are you going to wrap this thing up with? <sighs> this one was very tough because when you get to the fourth round, things start looking less and less sexy. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, who is in the best position or one of the best positions to possibly be, you know, a home run hitter, right? Because at this point, fourth round picks in rookie drafts, they're all long shots for the most part, right? Sure. It's very rare that anyone's going to hit. So for me, I went Sam Howe. And the thing about Sam Howe and the reason I went with him is because of what needs to happen for him to start. And the thing about Sam Howe was that overall he had a pretty solid collegiate career last year. If he, if a two years ago, if he came out, was able to come out two years ago, Sam Howell would have been drafted much higher, right? He had yeah. this much better year two years ago than he did last year, and right. it really hurt his price. So that's one of the reasons he fell in the drafts, and you know people are just off Sam Howell. But Carson Wentz is now the starting quarterback, and that's one of the reasons to be even more optimistic <laughs> about Sam Howell, right? Because we've seen Carson Wentz struggle. Now, I believe that Carson Wentz is a better quarterback than Sam Howell sure. right now at least. But we've also seen Carson Wentz, you know, mess up a lot in his career, throw interceptions, make bad decisions. So Ron Rivera might get sick of it and move on, right? And then they still have Taylor Heineke, but Taylor Heineke, he performed, I guess, admirably for Fine. Taylor Heineke last yeah. year, right? But he's he's not going to be your franchise quarterback either. So maybe Ron Rivera is going to be like, hey, what do we have in this kid, Sam Howell? Again, they didn't invest a lot of draft capital in him, but you have him as your quarterback. Again, he – has promise he could use he could run he could use his legs so it's like maybe they give him a shot right because I don't see them putting Taylor Heineke back in maybe because again like either you keep Carson Wentz in and he sucks or you <laughs> go or you try and you see what you have in Sam Howell because you yeah. exactly because you already know Taylor Heineke you know what you have in him and again you're he's not going to be your quarterback of the future so it's either Carson Wentz or it makes sense to. Try Sam out, see what you got. And then, look, training camp, you know, during the season and practice, like they're going to see him and see, hey, did we get a steal in this kid or he's going to be a career backup? We have no idea. But in the fourth round of a rookie draft, I'm willing to take my chances. Right. Yeah. I I don't hate it, man. I mean, like you said, they're, they're, you've seen some, some good out of Hal and there's some actually some okay running opportunity there with some legs and that, that could have you maybe a little built-in floor and, and give – Give the uh, the commanders, I guess, uh, a little juice uh, that, that that they were missing, and I think that's a good. You know, you get to see him in camp and see if hey, maybe maybe we got something. Worst case scenario, you hang on to Hal for a couple of years and and you clear some roster space. But I, I feel like it's not the worst swing. Some people would say you just I'm not drafting a fifth round quarterback at all because you know the probability of him hitting is zero yeah. or whatever. But I mean, I I feel you. I don't I don't hate it at all. You are in the fourth round. I mean. Maybe he gets a little buzz and you're trying to upgrade your quarterback position. And we all know it's hard to upgrade that quarterback position in a super flex without at least giving some sort of a quarterback. Uh, that may be something. So uh, definitely don't hate it. So wrapping it up with Sam Howe, man, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, if you want to stick around for a second after this, we'll, we'll do a little draft recap. Let's do it. All right, John, take us home with your last pick. We're in the fourth round here. At the Bauer Club at Dynasty Theory FF. That's where you can find my man live every Tuesday. Um, who you got? Four three. What's your what's your last shot? 
Rally up the Cade Brigade. I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> Cade right. Otten. Cade Otten. Now, let me tell you why I took Cade Otten and why I have a lot of shares of Give him. Give it to me, baby. I don't think it's a good profile. I don't think he ultimately ends up doing anything in the NFL. I think we could be looking at him like a Kylan Granson type who had that hype last preseason. And in tight end premium, you could have moved off him for a profit. As soon as Rob Gronkowski, if he does ultimately announce his retirement, Kate Otten, it might not be a huge spike in value, but I, I am looking to move him off my roster. If I were doing this draft today because I love the profile, in a bad situation seemingly, I would take Charlie Kohler if I had the roster spot, if I had the room to let him sit on my roster because yeah. he jumps off the page from an analytics perspective. So the Kate Otten pick, it is strictly for – a spike and flip that, right. that, that is for all I want to want a piece there. of Tommy, you know? I, yeah, I that's anybody, it. I want anybody tied to Tommy. Well, it, because it, it's going to be Cam Bray, who I think is underrated as an actual NFL sure. tight end. When he got his shine, he was just fine. Yeah. Uh, that's why they keep extending him. He does what they need. So Kate Otten, maybe people get that. Oh, well, maybe he could do something. Uh, people yeah. have wasted picks on a lot worse. So, uh, I'm looking to move off some shares. Now, you know what that means. Gronk's going to come back <laughs> and he's going to play for another 10 years somehow. Like something, yeah. I don't know what the hell's going to happen, but Gronk's waiting for yeah. training camp. I, I think he's definitely coming back. Like he, I, he can't he, stay home away from Tommy. And when Tommy hangs it up, he'll quit. He doesn't need the money. He just loves Tommy. I don't know if it's like threesomes that they have or what it is but he just i don't think he can i don't think he can stay away from tommy but he doesn't want to have to go through all he's working out in the in the fucking building if he's working out there if tom's giving you the nod pretty much regardless i mean why would why wouldn't why would you hang it up you know so right tom's come on but but maybe maybe his body physically he's like hey man like i'm i'm good like i'm gonna go be on wwe and i mean he would he could have done that last year he could have but who knows? Who knows? So we're rounding out with Kate Otten there. Uh, appreciate you. And uh, stick around for a second here. All right. We're moving on to pick 4-4. Four, four. Back with Michael Bauer at Rewind CEO. Check him out at the Dynasty Rewind podcast. Who you got at 4-4, four, four, Michael? So 4-4, four, four, you know, we, we scouted a lot of players from SMU. And I like Danny Gray the best. To be honest with you, I was scouting him, Reggie Roberson, Rasheed Rice, and Grant Calcaterra. And Danny Gray just popped to me. I do have a little, a slight concern. He's six foot one, but I think he's under 190 pounds. So he's a little lanky, hoping that he can add some muscle to his frame. Then again, Devontae Smith, about six foot, like 170 pounds. I mean, he's a he's a twig. It seems he's like, like the, the weights are coming in lighter with these wide receivers. And I think maybe, you know, a lot of these dudes are dropping weight to run faster at the combine and whatnot. Actually, on Sleeper, they got him listed at 199. So Do they? Okay. 6'2", yeah. two, too. So they might be – you never body. know, man. Simmons, like uh, weight 105, you know, yeah, in your bra. The, the weights kind of fluctuate. and But, yeah. but you, the way that you can't touch these wide receivers. So like the lighter they get, it's not as big of a problem as it probably used to be. No. And and look, like, like I said, Devontae Smith, he's slender, but he was pretty physical. He didn't miss any time last year. I think Danny Gray could be the same thing. Jalen Hurd's not going to work out in San Francisco. I wish Casey was here to tell me all about the 49ers. We still don't know what's going to go on with Debo. I think he plays there. And Brand he followed died. him back on Instagram. So he must be ready to take that payday. There we go. Um, we don't know what's going to happen with Brandon Ayuk. Is he still in Shani's doghouse? I don't know. Danny Gray is a little bit different than all these guys. I think he prototypes to me as an outside wide receiver. Uh, I believe third round draft capital. Don't have that in front of me right now. Yep, 105 but overall. At the 4-4, you know, this is get your guy territory right here. Sure. And he's a guy I like. And if this is a rookie draft, he's probably a guy that you're just dumping on your taxi squad anyway. So if something happens, great. And just looking at the rest of the fourth round, I'm happy with the pick, to be honest with you. I did get sniped by the 4-3. I just want to say that that would have been my pick. Um, but I'm happy with it. I also like the 4-12 pick. I won't spoil it, but he's a guy that I would have taken in the fourth round, just not here. Another tight end, just to preview that a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, 
Kyle Shanahan putting his stamp on a third round wide receiver, you know, I, I can't be mad at that. Just just that alone, you know, and especially in the fourth round, what what are we doing here? We're just we're throwing darts. Take your boy, take your stab, take the swing. Who do you like? You know, I probably I might could have taken the guy that went off the board right next, uh, which is a running back, just for for that simple purpose. Um, v- Valus Jones is another guy that I like taking a swing on, uh, but I you know I can't be mad at all uh, uh, taking taking Danny Gray. So, got to got to got to shoot your shot and not not the, not the worst pick ever. I, I like it. All right, man, we're back with Garrett. We're at four five. We're rounding this thing out. Who's going to be the last pick in the draft for you here? Yeah, I ended up going with Kyron Williams here at 4-5. And kind of what I've noticed in a lot of my drafts is once it gets to roughly the fourth round, there is no more consensus. It's just kind of grab the guys you liked uh, and, you know, let let it let it be what it's going to be. And that's kind of what Kyron is for me. Uh, pre-draft, he was my RB5. Uh, I thought he looked really good on tape. Uh, but even when watching the tape, you knew he wasn't the most fantastic athlete. Sure. Then we had the combine and the combine absolutely tanked his stock. But everyone remembers the, uh, the the time that showed up on the screen. But everyone kind of forgets that there was an official time that came out later that was significantly better. Then he had his pro day where he actually ran in the mid four fives. Uh, so mid four fives for a guy his size is still not blazing, but right. it's much, much better uh, than the the four sixes and even the four sevens that we were originally thinking that we were getting out of Kyron Williams. But it, it goes back to the tape for me. He did two things in this class as good, if not better than anyone else in the class. And that was being used as a receiving back and blocking on third down pass protection. He did both of those things fantastically well. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do for this team. I think he's solely going to be a third down back. And But but even if that's the case, if two or three years from now we're talking, well, he only got 35 rushes on the season, but he also had 70 receptions. You're thrilled. Sure. You are thrilled with being able to get that in the fourth round. And so when you look at the two things he does well, they profile perfectly as a third down back and i think that's how sean McVay will use him so if i'm gonna take a stab in the dark here uh at this point i think he's he's the kind of guy that i want to do that with yeah i mean i'm i'm right there with you again i, I like the shakir pick uh, and i like this i like this williams pick he's another guy certainly fourth round i'm, I'm definitely seeing if i can just trade a minuscule amount and, and scoop him up i mean you know nothing crazy i mean if i can i'll just wait my turn and see if i can get him but i like the landing spot we know that uh, Daryl Henderson's one year, one more year hasn't been super healthy his entire career. Akers is coming off an Achilles. I know, you know, it's probably projecting as mostly just a third down, but we could see a little more usage if they, you know, if if somebody's injured. I mean, sure. it's amazing that Cam Akers came back from how fast he did, but we saw him, you know, kind of come back. Oh, it's amazing, and then kind of be like, eh, left a little, left a little to be desired there yeah. uh, at times for you. So. You know, the Rams pretty confident. They do well in those late round picks. Um, and I feel like they found a guy, like you said, I think people are overlooking how well he pass protects and how good of a receiver he is. Usually that's something people are super hyped about, but since he ran a slow time, nobody's excited about it. And I think this is a great little stab in the fourth round. Which, like you said, if you go back to the tape, he looks faster than that combine speed. I mean, he's busting off long electric type runs against high sure. type talent. So, like, Maybe maybe a faster on the field in pads kind of guy, and I'm fine with that. And it's, and you add in the pass protection and the, and the pass catching, and the intriguing landing spot, and all, all fucking day in the fourth round, I'm yeah. down to take Kyron Williams. So yeah, it's sort of like David. I don't know who watched the tape and thought that you were going to come out and shred the combine for David Bell or Kyron <laughs> Williams, um, but you just I don't know if you were. I just, mean, I did expect them to run faster than that based on what I saw on the field. Yeah, I, I mean, mean four fives is probably about what I thought. So. Uh, yeah, but, I think his pro day was closer to what he really is than yeah. than the, the combine was. But but pretty powerful for his compact size as well. Oh, yeah. um, so I love the pick there, man. Uh, I, I like like most of the draft. I you know love Kenneth Walker. Obviously, Zamir a little early for my taste, and, <laughs> but you know we we get it. I, I kind of knew what you were what you were doing there, just having some fun with that. But really like this draft from you. Um, if you want to stick around for a second after this, we've just been having everybody kind of talk about what they like what they didn't like you know which is how we yeah. got to the uh so Zemir much severe hate, hate so. the, the zamir white hate <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, so stick around. We'll finish out this fourth round and come back to you. All right, sounds good. Back, wrapping it up. Last chance, 4-6. Angelo, what you got here? Angelo. Man, I, I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> I went Kyle Phillips, man. I mean, I, I'm taking him in every single draft. Me too. I think Love I it. have so far. Uh, he's just super underrated. Yeah. Like, it, it's kind of like Hunter Renfro a few years ago. Right. When you're like, eh, I don't think this guy is that good. Then you watch him play, and you're like, oh, Who, damn. who's that? He's got some juice, some giddy up. No, and, and the thing is, too, he's going to see the field early as a punter turner. Bingo. And that's a big deal is when you're a rookie and you're not a day two pick, the biggest thing is can you see the field early and take advantage of the opportunity? He can, and right. he probably will because he was, in my opinion, a he was the best parter in the nation when I watched him. Yeah, he's, like there was not a guy who who tracked the ball better and made better decisions than he did. And then also he has the open field skills to take to the house. I mean, he's he's not slow. Obviously, he's a little bit shorter stature. He's not going to break a ton of tackles. But man, I mean, he's just one of those guys that like you are going to want to get him on the field. And right now with Robert Woods and his injury. Yeah, who's starting in the slot right now? Like, I think it's a very good chance that Kyle Phillips from day one for Tennessee starts in the slot for Ryan Tannehill in that offense. Obviously, with Burks probably starting at Z, I would say, or on the outside at X, um, and then Robert Wood slotting in somewhere in there. I mean, I think you can just put Kyle Phillips in as the slot target this year, and I think he's a guy who could have a Jamison Crowder like career, yeah, um, in terms of production and. That's not necessarily a bad thing. So I'm taking no. I'm taking that type of depth at this stage in the draft. I want secure depth, and I think that's as secure as you can get at four six with Kyle Phillips. Yeah, no, I, I really like I said I, I like this pick a whole lot. I, I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm trying to grab Phillips as much as I can on the way out of the draft because you know, like you said, there it is important to be able to he'll, he will get on the field as a punt returner. I'm not sure who else they really even have to return punts. Right. Um, and I'm sure some Titans fan will fill me in on the comments here. Um, but, you know, that's important. You can you can earn a role that way. You can get on the field and show them what you can do. But there's also, you know, there's not a whole lot of real super strong competition to see the field in other ways and, and earn some more snaps in that regard. So I think there's two, and, and the talent level is, now the testing wasn't super great, but he definitely looks faster on the field than what you saw at the combine to me. Right. Um, so I'm, that, I'm right there with you, man. I think that was a, a great snag. Thanks. Appreciate that. Last pick for Mr. Devi Marketplace, the uh, the value guru of this draft. The cane known as Fussell. <laughs> just going to drive that home, man, because people probably been pr- hey. mispronouncing your name just left That's and true. right. So set them That's straight. Right. We're setting them straight here tonight. Perfect. Well, I mean, you may or may not have gotten Tyler's name correct. Uh, so who do you got here? I said it every way possible, though. So at least <laughs> so it was one of those has got to hit. I think yeah. it is yeah. Algier, but it might uh, be. It might be. <laughs> don't quote me on it. It might be. <laughs> Could be. I don't know. So who's the last name uh, you're you're gonna take a shot on here? Four, so seven. when I was looking at this, there was still one. Uh, wide receiver that was drafted day two that hadn't been picked yet. Um, and for me, that that's someone that I'm always going to take a shot on. We're in the fourth mm-hmm. round. So you have Velas Jones Jr. going to the Chicago Bears. Right. The Bears. And love like, it. I wouldn't say that I love Velas Jones Jr., but like outside of Darnell Mooney and, you know, a little bit of... Uh, Montgomery and Komet, um, maybe. Yeah, and uh, like outside those Cole, guys, like who else are they going to throw so. to? Yeah. Right. Byron like, Pringle. They have to, uh, they have to throw Saint to Brown. someone. <laughs> <laughs> like they have to throw to someone. Right. And like so, I'd rather take the shot on the guy that they wanted to spend such good draft capital on. Right. When they Story. needed wide receiver help. Story being him, Velas Jones Jr. for this team. They chose Velas Jones right. Jr. on a day two pick, right? Like, so if that's what they want to do, I'm just going to trust that they're going to at least try to use him, right? If he ends up working out or not, that doesn't matter. But at least they're going to try to use him in that way, um, right? So, like, if if he even plays okay, I'm probably going to be able to trade him for like a fourth or fifth round pick. 
And it's right. like, shoot, that's all I got. But at least I'm going to re-roll for the exact same thing. And if not, he ends up getting cut for my team and no big deal. It's a fourth but on round the, pick. Who cares? Yeah, on the chance that that he actually gains a little steam and then he has, what, three games this season for 80 yards and a score or anything like that, right? Like, God forbid he gets a Debo tag next to his name, you know? Oh, boy. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> <laughs> Bellis Jones Jr., the next Debo Samuel. Um, the same age, so, so. Yeah, perfect. That doesn't look like, well, though. That's that's why people sure. hate him. But but that's like the main knock, right? But like, that's right. it. That's it. But if you think someone's not, if Velas Jones Jr., if we're getting reports, right, that he, he's the wide receiver two in Chicago, do I think the wide receiver two in Chicago is valuable? No. But like, if someone else thinks the wide receiver two in Chicago is valuable, give me a 2023 third round pick. Right. Right. I've already made my value yeah. back. And he's definitely a guy who can make a splashy, some splashy plays. He's he's fast and and pretty strong and and already a wily veteran. Um, so. <laughs> You know, I, I agree with you. I, I would have if you wouldn't have taken him. I'm, I'm the pick behind you here. Um, and I would have definitely taken him. He's a guy that I see myself taking a lot in the fourth round. The story is, is that Poles and Fields sat down and they said, we got this third round pick. Who do we take in? And they sat down and watched film together. And that was the guy they both came away saying, this is the guy we want. Um, you know, whether that's good or bad and whether him being 100 before he gets on the field is, is relevant. That's not for me to decide. I don't really care. The Bears already decided it. Like you said, I think that's the fact that he's been written more than Seattle slew is irrelevant. Is irrelevant. But you're, um, you're not going to have an N.A. next to your breakout age and, and everyone like you, you know. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But that's a okay. <laughs> breakout. Age, but I love this pick. Out love age. this pick. Great. Yeah. Great pick at four seven. Strong value. Just just accumulating all the value there. Gain. Four banger picks is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Well, I will say, you know, in the in the breakdown, once everybody's gone and we get to say whatever we want, I'm I don't I don't have much to say negative about what you just did, my friend. I like it. I like the rationale. But don't worry, you don't you don't win your league at the draft, um, mm-hmm. because, you know, if I just had these four players, my team would still be shit. <laughs> Fair. So you Fair. know. What up? We're back. 4-8. It's just us. No guests for this one. Man, what a what a time this has been. Appreciate all those guests that have been joining us for all these rounds. Man, what a haul. I don't think you guys understand the work that went into this. Just we were recording like every fucking night, reschedules. Some guys kept to the first schedule. Some guys, you know, shit happens. We made it work. We grinded. And now we're here at the last round. We got 4-8. Casey. I got What'd tired. You do? Of, I got tired of pushing back on people about things. So, <laughs> anyhow, uh, I took I took just a, 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 one of the shot guys, you know, <laughs> Justin Ross, just yeah, a, a guy boy. you're throwing a dart at with with mm. fun upside and on, on a nice landing spot and getting a little talked up. Although who isn't right now? But fuck yeah, four eight, Justin Ross. Why the hell not? I mean. Strong breakout just, age, just crush it as a freshman, and then, man, just injury after injury, which is what led to him being undrafted. But then the Chiefs go and sign him. God landing spot. You know, if he makes the roster, you can flip him for a profit, you know? So why not take a stab at turning your fourth into a third? Or maybe you just check it out and see just, what happens. I mean, yeah. it's a free pick. There are Well, no- if it's a 23 third, then, I'll, then I will. <laughs> yeah, then I will, yes. Well, it's not gonna- yeah, I mean, obviously we're talking but about But nobody will do that. Class. It'll just all be a 24 yeah. third. So, I mean, we I've said this already a bunch of times. There are no bad picks in the fourth round of rookie drafts. Take your boy. Take a stab. Take a swing. Throw a dart. It is tighten up those Matt stairs was the Matt stairs. I found it. I found it out and I put the, I put the his picture up in round one, that video, go check out round one. Uh, Matt stairs is the, the fat and he only played for the Cubs one year. I don't know why that's why I found out who it is, but he was this <laughs> fat white guy that would just swing for the fences on every single one. And it was either a home run or a dinger or just a spin around on the, on the strikeout. <laughs> Falling down because he's fat, can't keep his balance. Like I'm fat, so I can talk about fat. Probably had a six pack before oh, the game. Oh yeah, just getting down. That was the least of his problems. Couple so, six packs, maybe a heater. Yeah. <laughs> a little nice bottle of key ante. Uh, take a swing, you know. Take a home run swing. That was the point of that. That's take a Matt doing. Stairs home run cut. We got on there Justin eventually. Ross in the fourth round. Four, three rounds later, we got there. 
we're back with the final pick of David Wilsey. Uh, been a been a strong running back conversation throughout. Man, a man after our own hearts, just oh, hammering sure. running backs. And here's a little preclude. He's going to pick a fourth <laughs> one. I just know that. <laughs> that is that is correct. We are going to stick with the guy who I was a bit. A, a lot of people liked. A, a lot of people liked him, and uh, I never. He he's been a guy who I was lower on, and post draft I've kind of gotten I've kind of raised on a little bit, and that's Jerome Ford, Cincinnati, going to Cleveland. A lot of people had him as a you know there's people had him top five six back in the class. He, he I believe he looked great in like Grand Barfield's yards created metric, and I, I I didn't see it. I had him projected as a fifth rounder, I believe, off the top of my head. I don't have the sheet right in front of my face, but um, he he was just kind of a guy who I thought fit in that middle tier of day three, and that's that's you know where he where he landed and sticking with the theme of situational upside landing spot um nick chubb's gonna be the only guy under contract next year in cleveland Mm -hmm. there's i mean who's to say that jerome ford can't come in and you know take over that dearness johnson role i mean are we so sure that an undrafted free agent is just solidified as the number three back there when it might just be the scheme and the team that that do a lot of the pumping up of the running backs for here, you know, but he is landing in a spot with potentially a ton of opportunity, obviously. Well, I mean, I guess we'll see what happens with, with Deshaun Watson. um, As far as if he plays the whole season, that would probably lower a bit of the opportunity that the Browns running backs get. Uh, they would obviously probably pass a bit more, but it's still one of those situations where there is a path to potential opportunity and value for a guy who, I mean, he's, you know, he's got some pedigree. He, yeah. he just didn't want to wait like Brian Robinson waited. And so he transferred and then waited. <laughs> and, I mean, he, Was that he dopes waited. in front of him? Yeah, but he was know, clearly it, better than him immediately. You, you, gosh, but it's just one of those things where, like, then why, you know, right. why? But I mean, he does have pedigree. You know, guys don't guys don't go to Bama because they're bad running backs, you <laughs> sure. know. And so, um, there's 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 upside. He maybe he just legitimately didn't want to wait. Maybe you know. So he was like, it's always loaded. I can go here and and show my skills um which you know he he balled out this final season it just sucks that it took so long for it to happen but uh there there's a path for for ford to potentially have some uh relevance in 2023 and beyond yeah you you mentioned deshaun watson and whether he plays or not this year like he's definitely gonna miss some time not sure exactly how much time but he he's probably going to be there ready to go next year and jerome mm-hmm. ford's not really a play for this year you know like he is mm-hmm. in case one of those other two guys get injured which they do you know yeah. it, that's why uh the Ernest johnson got his shot and got the got the workload that he did because those other guys couldn't be available on the field and they missed time exactly. regularly and and kareem hunt's an unrestricted free agent next year and uh nick chubb has zero dead in both 23 and 24. So, I mean, dude, you know, you know there's, there's a realistic, I, I don't think we'll see everybody just, I don't think we'll see him kind of, you know, clean house, mm-hmm. but there's a, there's a definite chance that he goes into number or next year as potential, you know, number two least, in a yeah. committee, you Which know, is a good of, spot there for the Browns in general, what they want to do. And then bringing in a Deshaun Watson, that's just, money in the bank so exactly exactly how and much do you think deshaun you said it already kind of but how much do you realistically think deshaun devalues that that run game of kind of how we see it with the rushing upside see i i the only thing i would or is i would it sort say of like a lamar jackson better quarterback elevating more opportunities to score how do you see that but even more so though because i 
I don't think that more passing is bad for the running game really at all. I think yeah. sure. more so with the Lamar situation or something like that, it helps incru- improve their efficiency, but it takes their opportunities away. Mm-hmm. Whereas I, I think I, I don't ever fade a running. If I know a running back is the guy in a high powered offense, you do not fade that James guy. Cook, baby. He's, he's getting so much love right now just for that reason. And if he is that guy, oh man, he yeah, could be dynamite because for sure, he's, you know, Singletary. We've seen when they when they commit to somebody or you know give them a hefty workload. Even he even was good Moss, down the stretch, man. Yeah, exactly. RB six, the second half of the season or last six games or something like that. Yeah, so I mean, there's you know, don't with guys like this, you know, like you're with Brees Hall and Kenneth Walker. Don't overthink the situation. Just take the take the talent you know what i mean Mm -hmm. but as you as you move down like situation you know things start to to balance out where you start to look a little bit more at situation and potential moving forward and stuff like that and you know ford there's a path and when you're spending the 409 like i just did on him i mean what's the downside you know (laughs) i mean I wasted a click on my mouse. Right. I mean, uh, that's really the only downside is a little bit of burn energy, maybe a little carpal tunnel. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's I mean, no risk with any fourth round rookie pick, you know? No, no. I mean, and it, like if you're like a lot of people, I, I mean, I've seen Isaiah Pacheco go. I think I saw him go in a second round of a mock, of a wow. mock draft. And I like, no, I'm, don't don't reach on any of these fifth, sixth, seventh rounders way up in there because their situation looks that good. Like obviously Pacheco didn't go when Clyde Edwards Hilaire went, but th- like the 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 boost that the landing spot gave him was pretty much the same thing. Don't take but as a, as a second rounder, that is a risk. Getting him in the fourth, that's not a risk, you yeah. know, that that's gravy all day. But like, I mean, there's a lot of upside with a lot of these guys that, that went late. Like, I mean, Tristan Ebner, what if he goes in there and he, he breaks in and is the Tariq Cohen for this year, you know, mm-hmm. or, or moving forward and he snags 80 targets and he's a kick returner. So, I mean, like he's a great kick returner. He, he should have a role from day one. They drafted him earlier than a whole lot of people thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like he four four point three speed, 207, 208 size, returns kicks, catches passes. He was a wide receiver recruit. Like, I mean, that that's a potential huge value that nobody wants. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. that's a that's a free agent pickup in some Yeah, you know, cases. and I mean if he goes in and Garner's a role just gets on the team based on his his um returning ability and earns a couple targets earns a couple targets and then potentially maybe we're moving into next year and we have like you know I mean is Monty for sure going to be there moving forward following this season Not you sure. know so like yep. maybe we have a committee backfield I I don't know it, obviously this is all optimistic thinking right but I mean, you just got to with with guys like this that there really are no risk, like take the ones that you can see the path to value, you know, the most. Yeah, I guess. So. I like it. Um, I got is we kind of already answered it there a little bit. But is there any running back that didn't get drafted that you want to afford an opportunity to? Of the undrafted free agents uh, yeah, on, um, on, on this board that just didn't get drafted in this. Oh. Uh, me, uh, so it was Ford, Pacheco, and Kyron in the fourth. Along um, with Keonti. <laughs> Ingram. His, so In- Ingram's value. Just took he, a hit. He, he was going to be like a huge value and then like just it, it started to skyrocket. And I almost got to the point where I was like, I don't even like it no more. <laughs> and uh, yeah, now he's back appropriately where he should have been the whole time. But right. um, let's see. Check a, you know, uh, honestly, like I'll just a couple undrafted free agents that t- could play huge this year. Um, Abram Smith and Kennedy Brooks. Yeah. And uh, I think Zonovan 
Bam Knight. Donovan, my boy. Yeah. That's the first I, person I ever heard say his name. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I got to I got to say his name, man. He followed me 3 years ago on Twitter and I I've I've thanked him ever since. <laughs> nice. Yeah, my so, in-laws both went to NC State and which is good and bad. They like to watch football, but I have to watch NC State games and he was always <laughs> popping off. All oh, Donovan, no, man. Like And did he so a lot of people just thought, you know, because you'd see him pop up on the uh, broken tackle list and every now and again. And um, Matt Waldman, who, like, you know, do you take the analysis for what it's worth? I mean, a lot of people love it. It's a lot of people um, like to talk trash about it. I respect anybody that 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 makes their way to that level by, right. sure. you know, just doing whatever they do. So I, I am not like a typical analytics person where I just completely ignore the noise that comes from film guys. And, uh, when he was on, uh, moving the sticks, he said that I believe it was on moving the sticks. He said that Zonovan might be the best route runner in the class out of all the running backs. So what happens if Zonovan goes and takes Michael Carter's job? I mean, and then you got, yeah. you know, uh, uh, a guy um, who Michael Carter, who people are, you know, what, is he just going to go away? Maybe, Wait. you know, Zonovan would have got drafted last year. He didn't get drafted this year. There's a lot of guys who probably would have got drafted last year that didn't get drafted this year just because the sheer size of the class in, in general. I mean, I projected 49 running backs last year and I projected, I believe 96 this year. Wow. So, I mean, the, the, the class basically Doubled. Double. And obviously I'm doing I'm doing guys from, you know, Prairie View sure. and stuff like that as sure. well. So but the 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 amount of legitimate draftable profiles increased by about like 17 from last year to this year. But it's it was just a cluster that basically projected as a lot of day three picks. And so it was an interesting year. And I I think I think Bam, I think Kennedy Brooks, um, Abram Smith, I'm not a huge fan of the profile, but the landing spot and the yeah. potential opportunity there right. again to just, I mean, I mean, Mark Ingram, has he got anything left, right. you know? Kamara's and, got a little um, off the field stuff going on. We don't yeah, really yeah. know so, what that is. I mean, that could be some huge value. Of course, obviously, his value has um, depleted a little bit as people have latched on sure. um, since he went undrafted. But he could be a potentially big time riser going through the season. And, but it, again, it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be a situation where if he pops, I'm selling as fast as I can because he's an undrafted free agent yeah, yeah. and there ain't no guarantees with any of them. Right. No guarantees. Philip Lindsay. So, yeah. I mean, and they can be, you know, Lindsay, Lindsay still, he wasn't, he wasn't bad and, you know, two, three, four, it just eventually he just faded and now we don't even hear about him right. anymore. And it's like, yeah, the, you know, he was undrafted. He fit the scheme and then he didn't pretty much. I think that was two Philip Lindsay drops on one podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it might be the last ones ever. All right. <laughs> so, well, so Jerome Ford at four nine, David, we really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun chopping it up with you about all these running backs and, and all your different, uh, takes and opinions and 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 really good insight there so we really appreciate that um and we'll uh we'll catch you sometime soon man appreciate you guys having me on it's been a pleasure uh, thank you for listening to me ramble oh i loved it <laughs> and uh you know i uh, stuck on brand and uh, figured it was the best way to to relay some some actual actionable information since I really haven't done much on the wide receiving class at all this year. <laughs> yeah. But there is a wide receiver model coming next nice. year. Right. All right. It's so be the on the works. lookout for that. That's why you got to follow him at, uh, what's the, what's the Twitter handle at Will Sinator W I L L actually, S O N A T O R. Yeah. I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> Will Sinator with the number eight. There you go. It's a long time nickname that uh, that I had from, you know, shoot, probably 20 years. Yeah. So, well, all right, man. Enjoy your night. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, appreciate Much your appreciate time, it. man. I got to hear more about this RB 
uh, these unique RV analytics model, man. We've got to get you back on and, and chit chit about chit chat about that a little bit more. But really appreciate you coming on, man, and joining us for this mock. Have a good rest of your evening. And thank you, fellas. Thank you again for having me on. Appreciate it. And anytime. All right, Jeff. We're getting towards the end of the draft here. You got four ten. What do you got for me? Who's the so best I took value? Isaiah, yeah, I took Isaiah Pacheco, the Rutgers running back that joined the Chiefs, and um, it's one of those that you know where we're drafting at this point. Um, four ten, like take a dart throw that a guy that you know he had the highest speed score in the class, and so I think we've kind of complained a little bit about the Chiefs running backs not having home run ability, and and this guy seems to bring some of that, and so he's a different running back than what the Chiefs have in the room right now, and and that kind of raises my eyebrows a little bit that. When a team, you know, you can talk about it with James Cook kind of in Buffalo. It's kind of the similar concept that when a team uses a draft pick to add a player that's different than everybody else in their backfield, what what do they have in mind there? And so right. getting a piece of the Kansas City offense in the late in the fourth round, if you yeah. fall into Kansas City's running back, even in a timeshare late in the fourth round of a rookie draft, you have hit a massive home run again. Yeah, I mean, a uh- Clyde Edwards and, and Rojo haven't been pictures of health either for throughout their tenure so far. So, I mean, it's, you know, all of a sudden you could be looking at uh, the Rutgers back. I don't even know what, what, how do you give me, give me the pronunciation again. I always screw it up. Pacheco. Pacheco. Yeah, yeah, Pacheco. All right. Well, we appreciate you joining the draft and uh, stick around and we'll, we'll get some uh, what you think about what was a reach and what wasn't a reach. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, we're back with Matt Hicks, one pick away from basically wrapping this thing up. Uh, you can catch him on Twitter at the FF underscore educator. Um, obviously, you know, tons and tons of great rookie content from, from Matt Hicks. It's been great through this draft here, so appreciate that. Who you got at 411 here? Who's, uh, we talked a little tight ends, maybe a little foreshadowing here. What you got? Yeah. Hey, listen, I appreciate you having me on here. Uh, let me be a part of this uh, mock draft experience here. I have said throughout the process that I would not let this man get out of the fourth round in any <laughs> draft. I had the power to do so. And so I took Jeremy Ruckert at 411. I love Ruckert at this value. Listen, I know the Jets are adding a lot of weapons to this offense, but Jeremy Ruckert was a really fantastic weapon when asked to be one at Ohio State, right? We're talking about uh, a, a tight end with great hands good contested catchability, size, athleticism, and he's not a burner, but he's got enough speed to get around the field in the NFL. He's a two-way tight end. He's going to be on the field often because he can put his hand in the dirt. He can block. He's got good form. He's got great strength in the way he plays. And here's why I particularly like Jeremy Ruckert for fantasy football purposes. If you look at Ruckert's targets in the red zone at Ohio State he was a very effective tight end in the red zone right and we're looking at somebody who got his I mean certainly wasn't the featured part of the offense at Ohio State but I don't know if you've heard about him they went earlier in this draft right we have Chris Olave we had Garrett Wilson and those weren't even the two best wide receivers statistically on that team last year right Jackson Smith and Jigba was So the fact that Jeremy Rucker got any last year in terms of volume and targets and touchdowns is super impressive to me. And so you look at him in this Jets offense, I think that they drafted him to be that red zone option. I mean, you know, no knock at all on Garrett Wilson, uh, no knock at all on Elijah Moore. But, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, being at the five yard line and needing to throw a fade, right, or just get a big target and fire a shot in there like Zach Wilson will. I mean, Rutgert is a great target to do that. I think he's going to quickly rise to the front of that tight end room. And at 411, I mean, you could draft anybody at 411 and and have, you know, a good argument for it, right? So there's a lot of factors working in my favor there. Yeah, the Jets have an interesting tight end room going on there. We've we've seen kind of 40 a lot of 49er disciple stuff going on so maybe you know you're trying to catch a little uh george kittle uh esque usage out of somebody from the tight end room over there and like you said not a whole lot of large targets on the field for them come red zone trips uh so would you would you be willing to mortgage any next year's fourths or something else to try to get in a premium situation to try to get out uh ruckert in in a fourth round situation 
Hey, force comes so easy, man. Yeah. I mean, you could you could get that back easily as a throw in a trade. So I'm I'm a proponent of going and getting your guy, right? Agreed. Whether it's round four, whether it's round two, you know, I mean fantasy's fun. So I say in rookie drafts all the time, if you if you want to trade back in to get your guy, I mean, what's better? And I know it's fun to hit on the 101, right? It's you know, you want a top five pick because those guys are gonna contribute to your team quickly. But what's more fun than hitting on the 411, right? right. And being able to talk about that, like, no, nah, I I took, you know, George Kittle. I took George Kittle. You know, being yeah. able to talk about that, I took the fifth round tight end. And look at me now, right? Like, th- that's the fun stuff. So, you know, whether you hit or whether you miss, especially in the fourth round, you're going to miss more than you're going to hit. But, man, sure. if you if you take Rucker at 411 and he's a tight end one over the next, you know, at some point over the next couple of years, heck, if he has one big week, you get to do your victory lap on Twitter, right? <laughs> or blow up your league chat. Right, so. that's what I was going to say. Even if it's a fleeting couple of weeks from that fourth rounder of just like three or four weeks, you're like, fuck yeah, here's my <laughs> team. Yeah, and you never know what happens. I mean, I know, uh, like, I, there was the one year, gosh, I, I feel like these draft classes are blending together, but I took Gabriel Davis, like, in every third and fourth round. And just being able to sit there and just watch the narrative on Twitter, just like watch Twitter burn over Gabriel Davis while he's on all my rosters right now. It's just so fun. And he was just a free pick, essentially. Right. I love but he was it, my man. guy. I wanted him and I got him. And now I get to just <laughs> sit back and laugh about it. Yeah, I think I think the fact of you pointing out that it's fun and go get your guys. I think that's, uh, you know, some sometimes lost on uh, on some people. So. Uh, you gotta make it it, well, then you brought up Twitter, which Twitter is not fun, but <laughs> fantasy football, fun as shit. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man. My timeline is nothing but sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> Positivity and, and... At the FF underscore educator. <laughs> Direct your comments at him. Uh, Matt, I uh, really appreciate it. This was great analysis throughout. So if you're looking for more of that analysis, you can go find the rookie big board. Um, as you can tell, he was he's he's already on to the 23s. Uh, I'm not really sure how this guy finds the time, but uh, if you need any rookie information, I think he's got you taken care of. Must over have there. a cool ass wife. <laughs> <laughs> the secret is only a couple hours of sleep. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. It's, for real. It's it's a it's just you do a little bit all year long. That's really yeah. the best way to do it. Yeah. So. You know, I, I go zero and twelve in all my leagues just so I can watch my tape. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> all right, man. Well, maybe we'll stick around and, and catch some of the uh, after anal- after uh, draft analysis here with you. We got one more pick to get to. All right, man. Last pick of the draft. I'm hammered. <laughs> <laughs> who who you got here, man? Four twelve. We're we're we got D bro Derek Brown wrapping us up here. Who's the pick? Who's the last pick before we get to Fab? Or or if you don't have Fab, uh, whatever, waiver wire. I mean, look, uh, he might be the last pick of this draft, but he is definitely not irrelevant. Uh, I went with, and this is kind of going with, um, if you're going to go down the tight end rabbit hole in rookie drafts and stuff. And this if is you're tight end go premium. We had it tight end yep. premium, so. Well, I'm not, I don't, I don't dive into a massive amounts of tight end premium, like mm. in the sense of like, I don't overpay for tight ends. I'll just kind of get a bunch of guys and let them, you know, right. basically the play the matchups. Yeah. And this is kind of how, but taking a player like Daniel Bellinger here at the last, uh, for the last pick of the draft perfectly suits how I kind of approach the tight end position in the sense that I, I, Really try to get a cluster of guys and look for the next person that's going to hit. And you follow this with not only the size, but the athletic measurables. All of these guys that that break out in a massive way, nine times out of ten, you're looking for, do they hit the size thresholds and things of that nature? Number two, are they athletic? Because the guys that really, really break out, like ball out, come out of nowhere, over the last few seasons, hell, even farther back than that, it's all athletic guys. And you have Daniel Bellinger. I mean, look, he checks the boxes, fellas. I know it's not like a really, really sexy pick, but he's got early opportunity with the Giants. He's mm-hmm. competing with mm, Ricky Seals Jones. Yeah. Uh, and like I talked about the athleticism, 86 percentile 40 yard dash. He's got an 88th percentile speed score and an 82nd percentile burst score. He tested extremely well, and I know the counting stats were not massive at San Diego State, but he did show us a glimpse of that type of upside in his final season. You saw the yards per route run run climb up, 
And I think that he's a guy that, like, considering how well he tested and the early opportunity that he has in New York, and we haven't even talked about Brian Dable, I think that there's a lot of different things to believe that, like, if you take the shot at the end of your drafts on, say, a Daniel Bellinger, even, like, a Cade Otten, all these different other, like, size, speed, tight ends that could have early opportunity this is how you find like the next breakout tight end. Like I'm not going to go in the tight end premium and freaking pick Trey McBride in the first or second round. I'm just not doing that. Mm -hmm. Like who could be blocked for the next two to three seasons by Zach Ertz. I mean, thank you, but no, thank you. I don't want the next Dallas Goddard. That's, that's cute. And that's great and all, but I want somebody that they, if they have the opportunity and they have the runway, like Daniel Bellinger has with the giants and he has the athleticism to possibly capitalize on it. Those are the shots I'm going to take on tight end, especially later in drafts and on the waiver wire and in trades in Dynasty. Yeah, so you're, you're getting some maybe a little bit of Dawson Knox for Dayball over here for, for Bellinger maybe? I mean, look, this this offense smells to high heaven. Like nobody really <laughs> wants to invest in the Giants offense. Right. Except I'm saying like, hey. Take Wandell at a discount. He's a second round wide receiver. Take yeah. Daniel Bellinger, who's athletic as hell, right. as your tight end at the very end of your drafts. I mean, really, like, could we not see like rookies just come out of nowhere this year inside of this offense, considering they're competing with targets with I, I know Kadarius Tony's there, mm -hmm. but Sterling Shepard's coming off an Achilles. Right. He's it's Darius Slayton. It's Kenny Galladay. It's Ricky Seals Jones. That's it. Right. That's it. That's right. your competition for targets. Slayton. But, yep. Yeah. Yep. No, I don't. I don't hate it. I like it. I mean, give me, the, give me the. Uh, that's kind of like a, a discount Jelani Woods there at the end of the draft. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, he, he checks so many different boxes. It's really hard for me to pass up. Although, like, if you were to look at his counting stats, yeah. they would not paint paint you a pretty no. a pretty picture. No. Um, that in the totality. And honestly, when I was at Senior Bowl, I saw him get blown up a bunch of times and blocking, but. That doesn't matter for us in right. fantasy. Right. I don't really give a crap if the guy can block. If he's going to catch a crap ton of passes, he's going to run routes. Yeah. Let, let's go. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks for uh, participating, and thanks for uh, bookending the draft here. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. We did it. We hit the end of the fourth round, man. That was a journey. Thank you for everyone that joined us, including the listeners, but the experts that kept in there with us for the long haul we were going to do two minute picks per two minutes per pick that never that didn't even come close we got like six hours of content we're about to come at you next with a recap we're going to find out what these guys liked and didn't like about all that shit that video will probably do way better than this fourth round video y'all ain't <laughs> nobody made it to the end of this so if you did i appreciate you and let me get that subscription let me get that five star review on the iTunes, and, and let me get a go cop this T shirt. It's fresh. It's soft. Support your boys with a soft fucking T shirt. Yeah, we're in the middle of a of a mock draft right now. Superflex tight end premium. We're on the sleepers. We're doing it through the Discord. Go over to patreoncom slash Dynasty. Throw us that five dollar holler. We got some rankings coming out. We're fucking working our asses off for you for your pleasure. Woo. Help us out. Support us. We appreciate y'all. We'll see you next time. Peace. For your pleasure. pleasure.